all of y'all here this morning. Amen. I thank God for you. So glad to see Tracy and her husband here. Amen. He used to work with me. Amen. 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 You know, sometime in a in a week time, sometime there's a when you're a minister, there's a lot of things happen to you before you see me again. But this has been a trying week for me and but God told me, say, I got you. And I was able to do some things and I've still got to do them because my granddaughter is ill and and then my grandson got ill. I had to carry him to the emergency room children had to go to school and back. But guess what? Old Grandpa, the Lord had me. Amen? So, I just thank God for that. And I'm not the only one. I know sometimes you have your load too. Amen? But I hope this message this morning will encourage all of us when we are going through trials and tribulations and through difficulties and serving God and taking care of your family and your loved ones and working. Amen? But one thing I want you to understand, God never sleep nor slumber. And if he has his eyes on the sparrow, you ought to know he's watching his children. Amen? Amen. So this morning, if you have your Bibles with you all, prefer to read it off the screen. I'd love for you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. you're not able to stand, now we don't want you to stand. Amen? Amen. Amen. We don't want you to do that. You can make, you may be seated and you're going to still be all right. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians chapter 4 beginning with verse 8 through 10. Shall we read? Please remain standing. Our gracious Heavenly Father, it's once again, Lord, that we stand before your people. Realize, Lord, many things have transpired 
since we gathered together last Sunday. But we thank, Lord, for your provision that you have made for us, the protection you have given us. We are just in your debt. For those, Lord, you have preserved and kept because you love them. And Lord, we thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Lord, we all haven't been as good and kind as we should have been. And Lord, along the way, we've sinned. And we ask you, my Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive us, help us, guide us, protect us, and please continue to deliver us. Lord, we pray that we won't be so stout-hearted, so proud, that we will not ask you to forgive us. Because truly, Lord, all of us need you to forgive us from one thing or another. But we thank you now, Lord, for allowing us to see one more new day that we had never seen before or encountered the things that you will show us today. Remember the sick and the shut in, Lord, of this church, but not only this church alone, but those that worship in a true and a living God name. In Jesus' name we do pray, and all of God's people say it, amen, amen. You may be seated. It's always good to be here and to share the word of God with you. Some of you all can fit into this subject this morning. Worn out, but still going. That happened to a lot of us as we move about on these mundane shows and as we work for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here we find that the Apostle Paul remind us, those of you in the ministry and minister, that things will happen to you in this world. But we don't want you never forget that the God you serve is able to take care of you, to provide for you. You see, things in this life will beat you down. There are a lot of things you know, like worry, distress, anger, guilt. They have the ability to beat you down. But you must know that God, has the power to keep you going when you do not feel like going. And a lot of us have been in this situation that we just wanted to give up. But God said, hold on. Amen? This passage deal with the endurance spirit of an individual that God will not abandon his people. Here as Paul began now, I'm reading from the New King James, and he said, we are troubled. Then he specifically says this to us. Not on one side, but every side. Huh? 
You see, I've met some Christians who were sometime like that because they say their burden was so heavy that they had faced many fiery trials and they do not know what to do. They felt like they was worn out. But they realized they had to still go. And for some of you in the ministry sometimes, folks will mistreat you, talk about you, discourage you, and sometimes you don't want to go on. But I'm here to tell you, don't give up because you serve a true and a living God. And God will not abandon his children. Paul want all of us to know that. You see, sometime in this world, you're a child of God. When you're going through some things, you feel like God have abandoned you. And you feel like you deserted and you can't go on. But here, you got to always remember, God have already given you the victory. He died on Calvary Cross for you. And he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. So the victory is ours. All you have to do is proclaim it. And sometime, Paul in his ministry is telling us that you're going to have to deal with some dilemma that you don't want to deal with. Stay in your book. Because there are going to be adverse circumstances that you're going to have to live with. And it's not because you don't know the Lord. It's not because you don't read the word of God. But you got to remember that Satan moved like a roaring lion seeking who he can to what devour. And if you let your God down for one time, he'll come in. And he'll cause you a lot of trouble and pain. And you forget that you serve a true and a living God. You see, when is the last time you've been in a battle? I'm not talking about fighting individuals. I'm talking about a battle of circumstances and sickness and heartache and death that you have to deal with. When is the last time? You had to get on your knees and pray to the Lord God, I can't handle this all by myself. When is the last time you had to wipe tears from your eyes while you was kneeling down and the fight and the battle, but did you know that you had to put on the whole arm of God? You want out, but you got to keep going on because somebody's depending on you. And you see the fight is not chose, the battle is not chose all by yourself. It's the Lord. And I love what he said on everything. Yet not distress, but I have confidence in the God I serve. Have promised me, he promised me never to leave me Never to leave me. He promised me that he'll walk with me. He'll talk with me. He promised me. He'll visit me. He promised me. He'll heal me. He promised me. He'll take care of me. That's the victory. His word tell me that I know the God that I serve will take care of you. Now let me say to you, some of you that up in age, give me Psalm 37, verse 25. For some of you fall in this category now. And some of you will soon be in this category. David penned these words. 
I have been young. I could run, I could jump. I could stay up all night. I could read, I could engage in activities. I went about my business with no pain, with no hurt. I was young. And it seemed like everything was centered around me. But as time moved on, I discovered some things. And I didn't know it happened so quickly on me. I could not see it coming. But now, I am old. Things are a little different with me now. My friends are few now. I don't remember like I used to remember. And I can't call on those that I used to call on because they're in the same condition that I am. But I was young and I'm old, but what? I've never seen the righteous. Those that know God who've given their life to God, who have been saved, who've been born again. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And his seed, begging bread. Yes, you're going to get worn out at those age, but you must keep going on. He said, in spite of all, in spite of being worn out, we still got to go on and serve Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Because we realize Jesus is all we got. Friends are few. Family members are few. But Jesus is the same yesterday as is today. And that's what we need in our lives. As Paul talked about in his ministry, preacher, you're going to face these things. As believers, you're going to face these things. Oh, they come in your way. Not only that, he said, a lot of times, we have been physically exhausted. We are like rag tags on the edge. But the mothers got to co still come home and see about the children. They got to still come to choir beating. They got to still pray for the family. Yes, you got a lot on your plate. But guess what? You don't have to handle it all by yourself. Because you have a God that want to help you, want to deliver you. You got a God that want to give you strength when you're weak and don't let you stand down. You got a God that walks beside you every day of your life. All you have to do is call on him and he's willing to help you. Worn out, but still going on. The Bible tells us we got to pray for those who misuse us. And a lot of us have some of those folks. You can't stop serving God because people don't like you. You cannot stop serving God when people don't treat you right. But it's your responsibility and it's your obligation to love those that hate you and treat those like God expects you to. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's what God expects us to do. Paul, if you would, give me Isaiah 46, 4. And even to your old age, I am he. And even when your hair, when your hair is gray, will I carry you. Worn out, but still going. I have made, and I will bear, even I will carry, will deliver you. Huh? Yes, he will. God everlasting arms is always there to pick 
you up, to take care of you, to hold you like a mother hold a child. Look out for that child. That's what the God we serve will do for you. If you only believe and trust him and don't have a pity, pity party for yourself. You see, a lot of us steer so from our physical condition. And God tell us, we are not perplexed. But you see, when you get perplexed, you make wrong decisions. When you get perplexed, you just throw up your hands and walk away. You see, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You cannot denounce your faith in God when things go bad in your life. When death happens, or you get sick, or your child gets sick, or someone die in your family. You cannot denounce your faith because trouble coming up on you. Because all of us will have trouble in our lives sometime. If it's not now, wait. The storm is on the rising and it's heading this way. But God you serve, he sits high and he looketh low. And he know all about you. And he know what you're going through with. You see, you see a lot of times when things happen in our lives, we try to find other people to blame instead of looking at ourselves. Ask yourself, what am I doing? What have I done? Don't put the blame on someone else. But we must look at ourselves and what we are going on. Not only that, you see, what you cannot do when trouble is in your way. You can't keep your talent and gift from God. You don't hold your tithes away from that church. That's when you really ought to pray. You ought to call somebody else to help pray for you. You ought to call somebody else where two are gathered in my name. God said, I'm in the midst of you. You ought to have somebody that you can call on and say, I need your assistance. We need to go to God. I'm asking you, God, to deliver me. I want to tell you what I want you to pray for about me because I need God rescue me when all of us find ourselves in that condition you see Paul remind us that we ought to think where we are and sometimes a lot of us say I'm at the end of what my rope you want to throw up your what hands you want to walk away you want to pick up your marbles and go Grab your basketball and go. But what? I want to tell you this. You may think you're at the end of your rope. Well, listen to me, church. You are never at the end of hope. Huh? You are never at the end of hope. As long as you got hope, you have a chance in this world. Amen? Oh, amen. You see... We are not complaining about your limitation and my limitation. With God, there is no limit what temptation. Huh? There is no lim limitation, as he talked about it. And then he says in verse 9, persecuted. But what? Not forsaken. That's where he said, I'll never leave you. <laughs> Persecuted, but not forsaken. As I said earlier, if he got the eyes on the sparrow, he know he's watching what? You. Amen? Paul, if you would, give me Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. It's so 
when he the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whoever he shall bear, he shall speak, and he will show thee your things to come. Watch this. When you pass it through what? A what? I can't hear you. You must not know God. I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not what? Oh, Jesus. When thou walkest through the what? Thou shall not be what? Neither what? Oh, my God, my children of God. That's what the word of God said. I didn't make it up. When you're going through that, remember, God is always with us. Always. And this is what I want you to always remember. Give me John 10.10. 10. I've come that you might have life. Give me John 10.10. 10. I want you to keep going on when trouble come your way. The thief, the thief cometh to what? And to what? I come that they might have what? And have it what? More abundantly. This is the God that you serve. He wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to have things that he provides for you. But all he wants you to do, don't forget me. Don't forget me because I'm the source of all your blessings. And all your blessings come from God. You hear what I say? Every blessing that you receive comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Oh, we got to remember that. Oh, my God. God is able. And a lot of you have walked through the fire, maybe not this week, but week past. And you got to understand, when you're going through those troubles, God is going to be with you. Huh? When you wake up and say, Lord, I shouldn't have got out to bed this morning. I didn't know all this was waiting on me. You just hang on and call on Jesus Christ because he will what? Take care of you. Amen. You see, many folks, Paul talks about this. When you're serving God, my Christian friend, listen, many of you will get wounded in this ministry, but you got to still go on. The devil wants you to quit. If you stop, you're going to miss the blessing that God has for you. You must have the faith to move on, and your blessing is on the other side of that faith. But if you stop now, you don't know what your blessing is. When you get to heaven, you'll realize what you missed because you didn't have the faith to move on, to stand up, to hold on to God unchanging hands. See, not only that, when you work it in the church, you will become weak. But you got to still go on. Because God is expecting you to still what? Go on. You understand what I'm saying to you? He wants you to go on. Not only that, one of the biggest things you're going to find out about the power of God when folks criticize you. They won't take the lead, but they'll criticize you in your position. You see, it took eight or nine months to build up this build this sanctuary here, this building. But you can tear this building down in less than an hour if you put that dynamite by it and people destruct buildings. You can blow it down and it fall fall down. You see, folks that keep criticizing you, but they don't know Jesus Christ. Because if you knew God, and if you say you're a child of God, then you will not try to hurt another child of God. He goes on to this. Cast down, but not destroy. 
You see, folks will knock you down. But as long as you got God on your side, they can't knock you out. Huh? They can knock you down, but they can't knock you out. You can always get up before the bell rang on you. You can always be in the fight. That's why Paul could say in, in second, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. There's laid up for me a crown of righteousness on the righteous judge can give it to me. And see, you want God to give you no crown. No way in the book that you see God's people stop. They was mistreated, but they moved on. And if you're going to work in the church, in the ministry, you better look for these things. Huh? If they can't get you, they'll get your husband. They can't get your husband, they'll get your children. You hear what I'm saying to you this morning? Then Paul talks about this thing that, you see, one of the hardest things that you in your life is when you become weak. But you still got to go on. You can't stop. Everybody been talked about. Everybody been criticized. And then the most important thing, everybody been lied on. But you can't stop because folks lying on you. You ought to continue to do more for God when they lie. When I was a boy, and I know that was yesterday, we used to say, you can talk about me as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. And my Christian friends, that's what we all need to do. We need to stay on our knees praying to our Heavenly Father to keep his hands on us and cover us with his blood. Amen? Oh, amen. And I'm going to say this, and I'll soon be closed. Yeah. He's saying this, verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of our Lord, what? Jesus Christ. The life also of Jesus might be made, what? Manifested in our body. Huh? We have been planted together with him. Bread, God of mine. And Christ. Is on our side. Huh? Christ is on our side. But let me say this to you. To give as much that has in the past, but they were still given as much in the past, but they were still on fire for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yo, Joe. Your responsibility is to stay on fire for God. Don't let anybody dampen your fire. Don't let anybody cause you to walk away from the church. Don't let anybody let you turn your back on God. Because your faith, your strength, your deliverance, your protection, your belief is tied up in one risen Savior, and his name is Jesus Christ. And my Christian friends, whatever you're facing, I'm asking you, what are you in, uh, uh, in doing right now? I'm asking you, do not let it rob your relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God bless you today. May God keep you as our prayer. Yes, we all are worn out, but we are still going on.
And now we're going to stand. And we're going to invite someone. We don't know who they are. They may not even be here. Who have not accepted Jesus Christ. At this time in their lives. He's the greatest helper that one can have. May I recommend to you a Savior who loves you and he want to help you. And he want to invite you into a family where men, women, boys, and girls was once like you. And they accepted him as a personal savior. Jesus Christ can clean us up. He will forgive us of our sins. He will pick you up when you're down. And when you're weak, he will strengthen you. When you do not have a friend in the world that you can turn to, you can turn to him because he loves us. Is there one this morning that want a friend like that? Who stick closer to you than your brother? Who will never leave you? Not forsake you. Is there one? God bless you. You may be seated. And now as we move. <laughs>